Putin stresses that the armed terrorist groups in Syria have used chemical weapons in order to encourage an American intervention. The Syrian Arab Army forces advanced in Maloula and assumed control in Palmyra, inflicting heavy losses on terrorists. Iraq says that the terrorist Bandar bin Sultan was planning to invade Ninawa and Al Anbar governorates following the aggression on Syria. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our news for today. Russian President Vladimir Putin has affirmed that the armed groups in Syria were the side that used chemical weapons, not the Syrian army, and their purpose was to attract American intervention into the country. In an article published by the American New York Times Daily, Putin said, any American military action against Syria would flare up a wave of terrorism and cause the crisis to spread outside Syrian borders. He added that the use of force outside the UN in Syria is an act of aggression that would shake up Middle East stability. As Putin stressed that a U.S. strike against Syria opposed by a large number of states and political and religious figures, including the Pope of the Vatican, would kill many people and would further escalate violence. Putin said the USA, Russia and all the countries of the international community should take advantage of the Syrian government's wish to put its chemical arsenal under international supervision. The Russian president warned against providing the armed groups in Syria with weapons, affirming that what is happening in Syria is not a war for the sake of democracy, but a bloody confrontation between the Syrian government and the armed hardlines, including the so-called Jabhat al-Nusra and the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant. Meanwhile, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said chemical weapons experts from Russia and the USA would take part in the talks held in Geneva today with his American counterpart, John Kerry. Lavrov said such issues are highly technical, calling on Syria to join the Chemical Weapons Non-Proliferation Treaty. He added that he will also discuss with his American counterpart preparations for the Convention of the International Conference on Syria in Geneva. The spokesman for the Chinese Foreign Ministry, Hong Li, emphasized that his country considers the Russian initiative about chemical weapons in Syria to be constructive and positive, as it can give a new incentive for finding a solution to the crisis in Syria. In an interview with the Russian Itartas news agency, Hong criticized the American threats to launch an attack on Syria, adding that any unilateral action will lead to violation of international law and the basic principles governing world affairs. Hong added that the Russian initiative will help ease tension in the region, expressing hope that all parties concerned benefit from it. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Jawad Zarif has warned that the military aggression the U.S. threatens to launch against Syria constitutes a violation of international law. Zarif called on the USA to abandon its hostile policy towards the region. He warned American President Barack Obama that certain sides inside and outside the USA have trapped him and dragged him to such war. On the Iranian nuclear program, Zarif said the West must admit its inability to deny Iran its right to a peaceful nuclear energy. He pointed out that the only way to deal with this issue is to put the program under the supervision of the International Agency of Atomic Energy. Slovakia welcomed the Russian initiative for putting the chemical weapons in Syria under international supervision, stressing that it is a positive step in the right direction which may ease tension in the region. Boris Kandel, the press spokesman for the Slovak's foreign ministry, stressed that his country supports the efforts exerted to find a peaceful solution to the crisis in Syria through the upcoming Geneva meeting. 
Malaysia welcomed the Russian initiative expressing rejection of the American threats to launch an aggression on Syria. Malaysian Foreign Minister Hanifa Aman said that his country welcomes the Russian initiative, pointing out that a military action may cause widespread destruction and instability in the region. He added that Malaysia hopes the initiative will be a positive step forward in terms of finding a peaceful solution to the crisis in Syria. The Syrian Arab Army units assumed full control of Talat Atrad in Ashair Mountain in Palmyra, inflicting heavy losses on the terrorists there. The Syrian Arab Army units have achieved a great progress in pursuing Jabhat al-Nusra terrorists in Maloula. They crossed this morning the main square in the town and reached Martakla Monastery after eliminating scores of terrorists, the majority of whom were non-Syrians. A military source said eight terrorists were killed and 20 others were injured in Ras al Ain farms and a Sarkha village north of Maloula. The source added that the snipers who were stationed on the roofs of buildings outlooking Malula Square were eliminated. The news correspondent has meanwhile said the Syrian army in cooperation with the National Defense Forces has liberated a number of nuns and citizens who were held inside Mar Taqla Monastery. He added that clashes are still going on in Jabadin near Malula. The correspondent added that St. George Monastery underwent no harm thanks to the advance of the Syrian Arab army towards the area. However, some shops and private properties were subject to sabotage and looting by the armed terrorist groups, the correspondent said. The permanent consultative meeting for religious authorities in Lebanon stressed that Syria is paying a price for national stands which support resistance movements in the region. The meeting issued a statement in which it discussed the crimes committed by takfiri terrorist groups in Syria and the acts of destruction inflicted upon Christian and Muslim holy sites. The statement pointed out to what happened in Maloula in particular, which was exposed to vicious attacks by Jabhat al-Nusra terrorist group. The meeting condemned these attacks, which contradict all religious and moral norms. An army unit has eliminated a so-called Al-Furat Brigade terrorist group and destroyed their weapons in a Sina neighborhood in Dar Zor. Among the killed were the leader and the sniper nicknamed Al-Mashhur. An army unit has meanwhile destroyed a terrorist gathering near Al Ba'ath Bridge in a Rushdiya neighborhood scoring direct hits. Iraqi security sources have disclosed information to the effect that Agent Bandar Bun Sultan has recruited tens of thousands of mercenaries to infiltrate into Iraq in case of an aggression on Syria in order to occupy Ninawa and Al Ambar governorates and provide strategic depth to the terrorist gangs in Syria. This has caused the Iraqi Army General Command to instruct the border troops to use all kinds of force to confront any such threat. Meanwhile, the Iraqi armed forces continue to chase Qaeda terrorists in Al Ambar, capturing seven Qaeda leaders and destroying three of their hideouts. The Digital Operations Command has said its martyrs' vengeance operations in Diyala, Kirkuk, and Salahuddin have resulted in capturing 1,000 terrorists and destroying dozens of hideouts. The General Syrian Secretariat and SIS launched a project for encouraging children to join educational programs under the title My Right to Learn. The project is run by volunteers representing different social segments who seek to rehabilitate children made homeless by the armed terrorist groups in different parts of the country. The volunteers help provide books and bags to school children and collect donations for needy families. The project seeks to promote learning and education among displaced children. Now to latest business of market news, but after a short break, stay tuned. Welcome back.
Back, Deputy Prime Minister for Services Affairs, Minister of Local Administration, Omar Ghalawanji, has discussed with the resident coordinator for the UN activities in Syria, Yaqub al Hulu, the efforts of the UN organization in the light of the hard conditions, asserting that the response plan continues in light of the available capabilities despite the lack of funding, which reached out 57% of the resources needed to meet the demands of displaced families, which estimated at 1.4 billion U.S. dollars, according to the plan of 2013. The Minister of Environment has signed a cooperation agreement with the Minister of Water Resources to protect the water resources from pollution. The Minister of State for Environmental Affairs, Dr. Nazira Sarkis, said that this agreement concerning the activate, the laws and regulations of the environment affairs and protecting the natural resources, specifically water. On his part, the Minister of Water Resources, Bassam Hanna, asserted that the Ministry seeks for ensuring the clean and healthy water. Deputy Director General of the Export Development and Promotion Agency asserted that the agency board will develop the plan for promoting the Syrian export in the next meeting. He also indicated that the agency team will visit some countries to support the plan and there will be new mechanisms of implementation and new financial sources. On the other hand, the Professor of Economic Analysis at the University of Damascus Dr. Abed Fadliye stressed the importance of the government role to control the export of goods and Syrian products. Director of Damascus Fuel has announced that the available quantities of diesel and gasoline are sufficient and there is a strategic reserve, noting that the Directorate is distributing one million liter to the gas stations every day. He also pointed out that the price of one liter of diesel is 60 Syrian pounds. Oil was slightly higher with Brent crude adding about 0.1% to reach 111 US dollars a barrel. Brent prices spiked above 117 US dollars a barrel in late August on the virtual shutdown of Libyan oil output. Standard & Poor's 500 index futures lost 0.1% today, indicating the U.S. equity benchmark may hold a seven-day winning streak, while European stocks rose, sending the benchmark index to a five-year high after investors said the region's economy was improving. Japanese shares, on the other hand, fell with the topics index retreating for a second day. Gold retreated to a three-week low and speculation that the U.S. Federal Reserve will commit to reducing stimulus next week. Gold for immediate delivery dropped 0.8% to reach 1,354 U.S. dollars announced, the lowest level since August. The yen strengthened for a second day against the U.S. dollar after Japan's machinery orders stagnated in July and amid concern, sales tax increase will hamper growth, boosting demand for the currency as a haven. This will end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. God bless Syria.